Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are doing May's bullet journal setup. And I'll tell you what, it really doesn't feel like it's almost May because there is snow outside. Mama! Yeah? Wait, I'm talking no. Oh my gosh, you're and a truck. And the wolf is coming to know. It will melt by tomorrow, it's fine. Anyway, let's jump right into the video and start. Okay, so we are saying goodbye to April and hello to May. So for May, I wanted to do a wildflower theme. I love flowers and I love wildflowers and I thought it'd be very appropriate for May because things are starting to bloom and it's getting beautiful out. So that's what we are doing. Um, I really enjoyed last month's birds. That was a lot of fun, Focus more on watercolor, but May is gonna be all about doodles and paint pens. So I'm gonna be using my Acrylograph uh, paint pens from Archer and Olive. I really like the selection of colors. Um, but there are other alternative paint pens that are also great. Um, Posca markers, and as well as these Artistro markers, they're pretty good too. Um, I They come in bigger tips and smaller ones, I have both. Um, but I just really like the color selection of these. And I thought because I'm using my Archer and Olive journal, I would use these, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So because there is a lovely person mowing their lawn outside, I am going to be doing a voiceover and speeding this up just a little bit because I'm going to take my time and doodle, but let's jump right in. Okay, so before I get into the actual setup video where you see me setting up all the pages, I want to show you how to do the little wildflower doodles on plain paper first so you have a better idea of how to do them because the rest of the video is going to be sped up. So. For this, I am using my hot pressed watercolor sketchbook from Etcher Lab. You just need some smooth paper, especially if you're drawing with paint markers. Textured paper like cold press is not ideal. Um, then I'm going to be using my Acrylograph markers from Archer and Olive. And I thought I was just going to be using these, but then I ended up throwing in a few Posca markers, which are also great in your bullet journal. So that's what we're doing. So let's jump right in. The first flower we are going to do is lavender. And a lavender sprig is one of the easiest ones to do. It's one of my favorites. So let's let's do this. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is you're just going to do these kind of like upside down teardrop um, shapes. And they're just going to be going down the center. You can have some like right in the middle. Try not to overdo it with your marker. You don't want to go over the same spot over and over again because it will make the paper pill. Okay, so I would do that. Let's do another one over here too. Okay. And then I take my darker purple marker and I'm just doing a little line at the bottom of each of the little purple marks <laughs> just to make it look like it has a bit of shadow then I take my green marker whatever green you want to use and I'm just gonna do a stem down the middle and kind of connect them and then a little stem and they can cross like that so so easy and then you can also do like tiny little leaves coming off if you like. You can add whatever you like to it. And that's our lavender sprig, so easy. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is kind of like a dandelion, kind of. None of these are actually like really supposed to be real flowers, I don't think, sometimes, I don't know. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But just kind of winging it. So I'm gonna be going and doing this kind of shape, just upside down kind of teardrops, one, two, three, four, like that. Let's do another one up here. One, two, three, four. And then we can do another one. One, two, three, four. You're gonna grab either a lighter one or a darker one. You can add a little bit of highlight. I have a lighter yellow marker. 
I'm going to grab a darker yellow marker from the base like that. And then again, you're just connecting them. Okay, you can do a little bit of green on the bottom of the flower as well. And again, little tiny leaves. They don't have to be specific to the flower. Don't worry about it. Just make them look cute. <laughs> like that. And it's kind of like a dandelion. Um, I also end up doing a bigger yellow flower, um, which I will show you as well. So I grab, actually, yeah. So I'll just do one big one. And it's kind of like this, just bigger. So I'm gonna do a petal, another petal, connect it, another petal, and then like a, a half petal like that. Okay, and we'll do one more facing this way maybe. Larger petal, larger petal. It could be like a Cosmo, could be anything you want to be. You can do how many petals you want, and a half petal. Then I take my darker yellow marker and I just did some little lines. I think in the actual journal, I outlined them. You do some lines coming from the top. Really, whatever you want, there's no wrong way to do this. I'm just here to give you some ideas. Okay. You could add some white highlight on them, whatever you like. Actually, let's make the centers a little bit darker. Okay. And then again, same kind of thing. Just connect the stems. Know where the center of your flower is, the stamen, and then have the stem come right through underneath there. Because it's coming. if it's coming out this way, it's going to look a little weird. You want to know where the, the tip of the stamen is and come right through. Obviously skipping the petal, but you know what I mean? Just in line with the tip of that stamen. Okay, and that's a little bit of a bigger one. Okay, so our next one I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some thistle um, type kinds <laughs> because they look really cute too. And you're just gonna do some teardrop shapes. And I'm using this like dusty blue color, which I really love. Okay. Like that. And then I use this darker blue and I just did some spikes towards one side of the bottom to give it like a shadow. Actually, I'm gonna add some spikes with that dusty blue color. Okay, I take my green and I'm gonna do little spikes coming from the base of it. And then again, we are connecting them all together. I think they might have like spikier leaves or something. I don't know. There you go, there's some thistle. Okay, let's do a poppy. This one's really nice to do as well. So I'm gonna use my red marker and I'm just gonna do petal shape, petal shape, petal shape, half petal shape kind of and then we're just gonna fill it in. Part of me wishes I got the bigger nib in these Acrylograph markers. They're really nice and I love the color selection. I think I have, I forget what color selection I bought. It's in my first Archer and Olive video. I'm pretty sure when I test them all out, it's like the cool fall colors and jewel tones, I think. Um, but yeah, it's hard to color in big surface areas with such a small nib. And then we'll do another one this way. You can even just do like a blob, <laughs> to be honest. You know what, I'm gonna just connect this because I want it to look more like a poppy. Okay, we're just filling it in. Okay, and then maybe I'll do like a little bud here. Okay, and then I took my yellowy gold marker and I just did the center like this. Decide which way your flower is pointing. So usually where the longer petals are, 
that's the way it's pointing. So I'm having that like little stamen part go that way. This one's pointing this way. So I'm gonna have it go that way. This you don't really see. Then I'm also grabbing my dark blue where you can grab black and I'm just doing a little bit of darkness in the middle like that. Grab your green and again, right from the stamen, skip the petal like that. Connect it. You can kind of encase that little petal a bit. Maybe you can do a little one that hasn't bloomed yet. And I forget what their leaves look like, but you could always look it up if you wanted to make it a bit more accurate. But I always like adding a little bit of leaves. And there's our poppies. Okay. And then another one I do are like forget-me-nots. So I'm going to grab some light blue. And you're just literally doing like the tiniest little flower petals. Leaving the center white so you can do a little bit of yellow. Kind of like a star pattern. So I think I'm doing like six petals. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Grab your yellow right in the center. Grab your green. Same kind of thing. And you can do like different heights, make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever you like, whatever works best for you. Um, another one is just the same kind of thing with pink. Okay, we're just using these shapes that we've learned in the past with some of our doodles and our paintings and just using it to make these cute little flower doodles. So I'm just gonna literally do like a scribbly <laughs> like that. Kind of going around in like a half circle. Maybe one coming up here. I always like to add another color for a little bit of depth and shadow. So like a darker yellow, light yellow, dark purple, light purple, dark blue, light blue. You know what I mean? It just adds a little bit more. So I'm just adding a bit of dark pink to the base of this. And again, our green. Like that and just add your little leaves like that so lastly you can just add little bits of greenery too for like not necessarily wildflowers or you could do like a queen anne's lace kind of deal where you just do long stems like this and then off at the end of the stem you're gonna do a bunch of little sprigs and then you can just do some dots because queen anne's lace is more like really light white and you can't really draw white on white paper just little lines and that's a little nice filler too really it doesn't have to don't fixate on it being a specific flower you can do whatever color however you want a little spiky leaves little rounded leaves whatever you want but that's about it Okay, so now we're getting into the actual setup and I decided to do a border for my cover page, just five spaces in um, from each side. And then I did a few wildflowers on the bottom left side and then the top right side, which you'll see. And for this setup in general, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't wanna do anything too crazy or fancy or go overboard. I just wanted to make it simple, quick, and functional. That's my goal for, I think, all of my bullet journal setups because I don't have the time to be doing crazy elaborate spread spreads. I wish I did, but I don't. So I did these cute little yellow flowers and then I did my favorite lavender sprigs at the top, which I thought really was nice together. They complemented each other. Well, they're complementary colors, so it makes sense. Um, and then I just ended up out outlining the cover page lines that I made with green. And then for the page to the left, I decided to do a bunch of different little wildflowers kind of growing from the bottom. And that was gonna be my goals page. I kind of didn't really know what to do with that page. Um, so I made it my goals page and now I gotta write some goals. <laughs> but yeah, I just tried to do a bunch of different little wildflowers and just have fun with it. And that's kind of where I got the feel of how I wanted to do it. I put some washi tape at the bottom just to kind of give it a cute little border. And then I wrote May in calligraphy 
and then you'll see I do a little reference calendar for the month underneath the title there I'm writing goals as you can see <laughs> so I hate doing voiceovers I'm not gonna lie um, did a little pink bar at the top for the days of the week just because I like the way that looks wrote in the dates you know what's funny is I have been having such a hard time actually writing the dates in my bullet journal I've gotten them wrong so many times on my weekly spreads because I don't put weekends into my bullet journal I just do the weekdays because those are the days I work so I, I've gotten them wrong I think the past two months so I gotta actually fix that this <laughs> this month anyway here I'm just doing a big, I think they're like buttercups. That's what I meant to do. And you can see I use my white gel pen to erase some of those lines. Like I used it like white out because I should have used a pencil and decided where I wanted the stems to go first, but I didn't. So I used that white gel pen as white out. And then this page is my YouTube ideas and my next steps in my watercolor book. And I did this cool lettering where I made like a bar of green and then I wrote YouTube kind of going over it and then put white on the part that was green. So I think that looked really cool, like the negative space kind of writing. Um, and it was just simple and easy. And then lastly, we are at our weekly spread and I actually changed the layout for this month. And I got to tell you, I don't think I like it. One, I don't think I have enough space. I, I feel like I had more space with my other layout that I did for the week layouts <laughs> um, but yeah th th this was a nice change and I'll continue to do it for the rest of the month um, and then I just use some of the little wildflowers to accent each day of the week and that's honestly all there was to it I know it's simple maybe a little boring but I was really just kind of focusing more on the little wildflower doodles and I really hope you enjoyed it Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.